We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We there's no one like you. You are the almighty God. You are the all-sufficient God. You are the light of the world. Oh, we bless your holy name. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, in the life of every one of us, Father, please do something special. Do something that will cause us to shine brighter for you. At the end of everything, Father, please take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Right, let somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, shake hands with one or two people and say good evening, Your Excellency. And then you may please be seated. <clears throat> Mark chapter 5, reading from verse 35 to 43. Mark chapter 5, from verse 35 to 43. While he yet speak, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain we said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid. Only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and see the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming, he said unto them, why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they loved him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he took the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and said unto her, Talita Kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he chided them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. 
Let me start by saying that every form of weeping in your life will be changed to laughter. This is a story you know very well. It's the story of uh, a man who had only one daughter. And that one daughter was sick. And then he came to call Jesus Christ to come and help. But while Jesus was coming, somebody decided to steal a miracle from behind. And by the time Jesus finished with that woman, somebody came from the ruler of the synagogue's house and said, it's too late, your daughter is dead. The situation is hopeless. But Jesus Christ said, don't be afraid, only believe. And I believe God is saying to somebody here tonight, don't be afraid. Yeah. Your tomorrow will be all right. Yeah. Well, the rest of the story we've read. Jesus followed. By the time they got to the house of the ruler, there was a crowd, and they were all weeping and making quite a bit of a noise. And Jesus Christ said, don't weep. The daughter is not dead, he's only sleeping. And those who were weeping just a moment ago began to laugh. And this time, they were laughing him to scorn. But then Jesus went in, held the daughter by the hand, and said, little girl, I say unto you, arise. And the girl arose. Well, the interesting part of the story that we want to talk on for a few minutes is that after the girl arose, Jesus commanded that they should give her food to eat. Here was a girl whose son had set at the age of 12. But then the light of the world went in to her and changed everything. So in fact, Jesus was saying to her, little girl, arise and shine. Because we are still reading about that girl more than 2,000 years later. There might be someone here today that the enemy thought your son has set. Before this night is over, you will arise and shine. But he said to the girl, or to the parents of the girl, I've brought her back to life now but she has to eat in order to continue to shine. In other words, if your own light has just come, you must eat in order to continue to shine. And tonight, as you come to the Lord's table, as you eat, you begin to shine. Yeah. And then there is another story in Luke chapter 15 from verse 11 to 24. Luke 15, 11 to 24. It was the story of the prodigal son that you know very well. He was the son of a rich man who collected his inheritance and went to a far country. And for some time in the far country, he showed. Everybody was gathering around him 
because he had plenty of money to spend. But then he lost everything, spent everything completely, and then a famine came, and the man who used to shine was now struggling with pigs for food. Then he made a statement. He said, I will arise. And he arose and came back home. And when he got back home, the first thing the father said should be done is, let's have a party. Let this boy eat and begin to shine again. And then there is yet a third story. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4 to 8, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4 to 8, is the story of a man you know, Elijah by name. He was shining. He had just shown on Mount Carmel. He was shining. He had just beat a chariot in a race. But he became discouraged and he was and he was beginning to think of death. But then an angel came smote him and said to him, Arise, eat, so that you can continue to shine. So there are three categories of people present here tonight. There are those who have never shown before, but their light has come tonight. For them to shine, they must eat. Category two are those who used to shine, but for one reason or the other, they've lost their shining. They need, like the prodigal son, to eat so that they can begin to shine again. And then the third category are those who are shining even up to this moment. But for one reason or the other, they are beginning to feel a bit discouraged. They too need to eat so that they can keep on shining. Whatever may be your category, tonight, as you come to the Lord's table, I can with all boldness say to you, arise and shine. Do I hear somebody say amen to that? But you cannot arise and shine if you have never had contact with the light. And Jesus Christ is the light. So if you are here tonight and you have never really given your life to Jesus Christ and yet you want to shine with the rest of us, I invite you to come forward. Come to the Savior. Come to the light of the world. Let him wash away your sin with his blood and your shining will begin. And if you are a backslider, you were once a child of God, but you lost your salvation. And you want it back so that you can begin to shine again. I invite you, come to the altar. Let God restore you so that your shining can begin afresh. And so I'm going to count from one to four. Before I say four, 
If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, come. If you're a backslider and you want to be restored to Jesus, come. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. And those of you who have come forward, and those of you who are on the way, particularly in the old arena, Hurry up. Come to the Lord now. Let him save your soul and let him restore you if you are a backslider. Talk to the Almighty God. If you are coming for salvation for the first time, ask him to save your soul and wash you clean in his blood. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them and pray that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Let's pray that the Almighty God, the Great Restorer, will restore to him every backslider this evening. Let's call on the Almighty God just for a minute or two before I pray. And those of you who are still on the way, you have to hurry up now because I want to pray for salvation. And I want to pray for restoration. Hurry up very quickly. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I want to bless your name for your word. I want to thank you because there's always room at the cross for every sinner. I want to thank you because there's always room in your home for the backslider who wants to return to you. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. I'm committing these people who have come forward into your hands. Lord God Almighty, please save their souls in Jesus' name. Let your blood wash away their sins. Write their names in the book of life. And every backslider who has come back to you tonight, Father, please restore in Jesus' name. And I pray that from now on, whenever they call on you, you will answer them by fire. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward. I want to promise you from now on I'll be praying for you. And so I will need your names, your address, and your prayer request. If you turn to your left, you will see someone with a placard there. Please follow her or him. And it will take you to where some pastors are waiting to collect the information I need. And then they bring you back very quickly. God bless you. You can begin to go. Let's give the Lord a big, big round of applause as these people begin to leave. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping.
Amen. Tonight, as you come to the table of the Lord, you must know that you are coming to eat so that you can shine. So when you eat the bread, your prayer will be, Lord, anything in my life that will hinder me from shining for you, please uproot it tonight. Is it sickness? Is it weakness? Is it any form of contamination from the enemy? As I partake of the bread tonight, anything that will not allow me to shine for you, uproot in Jesus' name. And then, of course, when we have all been served the wine, when we are, when we are served the wine, you hold it, say we have all been served. And then I will tell you how to pray at that stage. The Lord Jesus, the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So you take the bread and pray. Anything that will not allow me to shine for you, Lord, uproot it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. 